Stealth is one of those game mechanics that has been around for decades, yet rarely gets the spotlight as much as it should. Ever since the 80s, games have been toying around with the idea that not every obstacle needs to be blown through, jumped over, or shot past, and that sometimes taking the silent approach can still be fun. A few months back, we explored parkour systems in video games, and how we could go about making our own by showcasing the mechanic that I had created for my own project. But a game can't stand on one game mechanic alone, and today my work will continue on Project Masquerade as we explore our next game mechanic and how we can design a stealth game. Welcome to Game Mechanics Explored. While researching possible references for this mechanic, I came across a very good video by God King himself, Mark Brown, called The Year Stealth Got Serious, and to avoid me repeating what he said, I highly recommend that you go check it out. But to sum it up, in 1998, stealth games had hit their stride in a phenomenal way, with three of the most influential stealth games of all time, Tenchu, Thief, and of course, Metal Gear Solid. I played around in these games for a little while, and after watching the video, it wasn't too difficult to see why they had such a sway over the genre. However, unlike the parkour system, where I thought the mechanic was best showcased by a game made nearly 20 years ago, the game I will be choosing as reference today is a much more recent offering from a series that is the undeniable King of Stealth. Instead of spreading ourselves out over the whole genre, we're going to take a deeper dive into the game that I think did it the best, and then pick out some other games to fill in the gaps. Metal Gear Solid V, no seriously for real this time, was a far cry from the roots of the series. The old 8-bit Metal Gear games had you plodding around in high-tech metal corridors, waiting for soldiers to move out of the way. And Metal Gear Solid had you plodding through high-tech metal corridors waiting for soldiers to move out of the way, but this time in the most stunning 3D that the PS1 would allow. Metal Gear Solid V, by contrast, drops you into a Cold War era Afghan sandbox with only enough pennies to buy a crappy little pea shooter and instant helicopter rides to your big fuck off oil rig in the middle of the ocean. This new open world is interesting in that the stealth dynamic has been significantly altered by it, while still retaining all the familiar aspects from previous games. It is these aspects that we need to focus on if we want to glean anything from this system. Stealth games are primarily made up of three components, which all affect each other in different ways. The player, the enemies, and the space they find themselves in, which I'll refer to as the arena. As the player, we are often tasked with a particular objective that is ideally meant to be carried out without being seen. The player will usually have a range of abilities or weapons or gadgets, something that will help them achieve their goal of not being seen. Enemies haven't changed much in terms of their stealth game meta, so the basic idea is always the same. The player has their goal and the enemies are in the way. In stealth games, they usually waddle around near the goal and act as a constant undulating barrier of some kind to the player with the difficulty of the whole process being based on the size of the holes in that barrier. The arena is one of the more difficult things to pin down, but it's essentially the little rat maze that the player and the enemy share, and only one party can come out of successfully. They come in many different forms, and can range from simple sandboxes to sneak around in, to very intricate puzzle boxes of level design, where even the environment itself can be used to turn the tide. We'll take a look at each of these in isolation as they relate to my chosen reference, and then over the next few weeks we'll take our design from here and then apply it in a development setting just like we did for the parkour system. So let's get right into it. The player is probably the easiest thing to dissect, as the main strategy for a lot of stealth games is to provide the player with a somewhat diminished array of abilities. The purpose of this is to force the player to be careful, to be stealthy because the guns blazing approach is mostly discouraged and getting caught is sometimes an outright failure. Snake, at the bare minimum, has two chief mechanics at his disposal. The ability to sneak and stay out of sight, and the ability to nullify enemies either by hand or by weapon. These two mechanics will carry you through most if not all of Metal Gear Solid V's stealth segments. Everything else is basically a bonus that can bring a little more wiggle room to your stealthing, but sneaking and shooting 
are usually more than enough to get by. Sneaking around has a few elements that we want to keep track of. First is line of sight. This is, of course, something that the enemies are doing, but it is something that the player has direct control over. The obvious way to cut line of sight from enemies is hiding behind objects. Then we have the ability to change our clothing to something more discreet. We also have the option to stick to the shadows and even remove light sources. Failing that, we have enclosed spaces to hide in. In other games, we even have the ability to quickly escape to vantage points or duck into vents. And even later on in Metal Gear Solid 5, we gain an item that turns us invisible for a while. Not an uncommon ability in these games, so what can we take from all this? Our sneaking mechanic will be based entirely around keeping that line of sight severed. In our own game, we need to give the player ways of doing so. Taking cover behind walls and other structures is a given, in fact, it's something I already went over in the parkour system. But what else can be done here? Well, we can also crouch and go prone, and even crawl into small spaces. I like this idea, so I'm going to do it myself. It's a nice balance between being completely hidden while also being almost completely blind, and it should be something that's easy enough to implement. The light source thing is an interesting idea, and I'd like to use it, but if we want light to affect the line of sight to our player, we'll need a way of tracking how much light is hitting the player, which could be difficult. Being able to go invisible is something that I'll pass on, but if I can find a way of tracking the light on a given surface, I do have a couple of pretty cool ideas for those shadows. More on that later. We also need to consider ways we take enemies out of the stealth equation entirely. We'll split them into direct and indirect means. Guns aren't going to be appropriate for my setting, but I will be using bows and arrows as a way of directly taking out enemies, and I'll be taking most of my cues from Shadow of Mordor in that instance. We can also sneak up to enemies and perform some sort of melee action to take them out, which is all pretty simple stuff. As for indirect means, we have a few more options. Setting traps seems an obvious choice. In Metal Gear Solid, you can actually set up some kind of stun or explosive to take out an enemy from a distance, but I don't think it'll be that great of a fit for my project. I do like the idea of using the environment to our advantage though. I've already programmed the parkour system, so getting around the arena is going to be a feature already. Maybe I can make some creative environmental hazards and dot them around the arena for the player to use. Explosive barrels have been a thing forever, so there's always a springboard for that concept to go further. More on that later. Failing these options though, we can also give the player the ability to distract enemies. Enemies quite often block the critical path, so having some non-lethal way of displacing them is always a good idea. This is a simple yet effective mechanic that will be very easy to implement. All we have to do is provide an input on the player that calls a method, and a method that sends enemies to the player. There are of course a number of other mechanics that stealth games feature that give players the ability to influence the enemies and the environment in their favour, but these basic structures will provide us the platform that we need to have any kind of flexibility with this system. As long as the player can do these things, everything else will fall nicely into place once the other mechanics are ready. Speaking of other mechanics, enemy AI in stealth games might seem simple on the surface, but it can be surprisingly complex on both the gameplay and technical side of things. While playing Metal Gear Solid 5 for research, I spent a bit of time observing the enemies like I was at the zoo, and seeing what made them tick. To keep things organised, we'll sort enemy behaviours into the traffic light system. Green light enemies are just walking around and completely unaware of the player. This is when the player is safest and has the largest margin of error. Enemies in this state have some of the simplest behaviour to program as it simply involves setting up a patrol route and directing an enemy along that route. Obviously things can get a little more complex than that with things like branching paths and working in other behaviours that'll help make things look a little more natural, but that'll be something for the programming video. Basically, we just need to set up a track for the enemy to travel around, and with Unity's built-in systems, this is not an overly difficult process. Yellow light enemies are enemies that have become suspicious, but still don't know where the player is. It's during this phase that enemy behaviour becomes a little more complex, as their patrols become a bit more hazardous to the player, 
The yellow light state is often triggered by the player, whether intentionally or unintentionally, causing enemies to behave in such a way that threatens to cross that gap and bridge the line of sight to the player. This includes things like checking the player's last known position or having more widespread or unpredictable patrols. It can be triggered in multiple ways, but all of them mostly involve being noticed or being heard. So we'll need to set up a way for enemies to identify those things and react accordingly. Red light enemies are the final state before completely moving out of stealth. They are enemies that know where the player is and are actively trying to kill them or chase them down. It's an exceedingly simple mechanic to program and won't need much work to implement. We'll need to play around with it though, because having an entire arena of enemies chasing the player around will look a little weird. I want to have a system that collects all the enemies nearby and sorts them into little groups. One enemy may chase the player, another group will go and try and cut off exits, another could try and call for reinforcements, which I think will make for an interesting dynamic. On top of these behaviours, we'll need to create a way for enemies to communicate with each other. In Metal Gear Solid 5, enemies will often call for a friend to patrol with, or to investigate suspicious behaviours with. Sometimes they'll even walk around in groups. It makes their AI more complex, and adds a nice challenge for the player by increasing the threat. However, it won't be the simplest thing to implement. AI is already something that some AAA studios will struggle with. A single AI is bad enough, but having one communicate with another and then wrangling them together to make decisions that don't immediately make them burst into flames is going to be a rather finicky process. There isn't a lot of documentation for this kind of thing online, and my resources are limited to video games and some very scant articles, but if we can have our enemies behave around these parameters, again we should have a good platform to jump from with our own ideas. The last aspect to explore is the arena. I chose Metal Gear Solid 5 as a reference almost solely because of how it designs its stealth arenas. I was originally going to make an entire video, taking a closer look at some of its best, but we've got programming to do, so I'll just sum it up. Arenas have multiple different components to them that will influence the course of the gameplay in a huge variety of ways. Simply by virtue of seemingly minor factors like the size or shape of the arena, it can massively change things up. We also have a number of modular aspects that we can insert and take out and change around as we please. Things like these watchtowers or checkpoints for enemies to hide in. Things like these tents that serve to further break the line of sight between you and the enemy. The rocks and natural formations in and around the area, either barring you from entry or providing you with a vantage point. The sandbags, the roadblocks, the, the fences, the Gears of War chest-high walls, all acting as a form of cover for the player. All of this geometry that helps you or hinders you. Things we can interact with and things that simply stand in our way. Again, it's hard to pin down specifics, but there are tons of modular and repeatable assets that we can implement to construct our arenas. Think of it like the map maker in Time Splitters or Forge in Halo. If we can identify and make all of the bits that we need, we have free reign to do whatever we want in terms of level design. We can then add in the more interesting aspect of arenas, and that is how we can influence them as the player. Metal Gear Solid V didn't lean into this too much, but other games like Hitman and Batman have done it in their own ways. To stop things from snowballing in terms of complexity, we'll stick to easy things like destructible scenery and the good old keycard system from the likes of Doom. I like the idea of having multiple opportunities for gameplay in such a small space, other than the main objective of course. I'll explore the idea more in that video, because there honestly isn't going to be much in the way of programming. Suffice to say, while our player and enemy AI are going to be mechanics that will take a bit more technical know-how, Arenas are going to be a completely different kettle of fish. Once we have our small array of assets and simple mechanics made, we basically have a toy box for level design, which is honestly really exciting to me. But we'll take everything one step at a time. So we've laid out some of the pieces of the stealth system that I want to make, and I want to talk a little bit about how I plan to put them together. In my opinion, the mechanics of a stealth game are in a very happy medium for somebody like me. 
Unlike the parkour system, which was a conceptual trial by fire that took me multiple attempts to properly wrangle, the stealth system has been a relative cakewalk so far. Game design is just as much about how you make something as it is about what you're making. Each component of this mechanic has been rather easy to create and put together. Whereas the parkour system almost felt like untangling Christmas lights, the stealth system felt a lot more like Lego. I just had to make the right pieces and put them together in the right place. A lot of the behaviours described above can be corralled into their own little sections, their own little methods that can be called as and when they're needed. It's that modular aspect I keep bringing up. If I can find out what bits I need to make, we can make them and use them as many times as we like. If I write a method to make enemies stop in place, then I'll always have that method ready to use when I need it. If I write a method that allows the player to shoot arrows, then I have a method that can make the player shoot anything. If I can apply this workflow to the whole system, then it's really just a case of stringing everything together. That will be our strategy going forward. Find out the bits we need to make, and put them together. The stealth mechanic upon reflection was a bit of a Pandora's box. It seems very simple on the surface, and if we're being honest that's what draws people to stealth games. It's just you, the enemy, and a nice slow approach to gameplay. As I delved deeper into what I wanted for this system though, I found I was coming up with ideas faster than I could write them down. It has the potential to snowball into an incredibly complex and involved system, and we need to strike a good balance between our ideas and our workload. Your eyes are often bigger than your stomach, and it's easier as an independent game developer to let your ambitions take over and drive a wrench into the gears. I know I didn't go into the design of this mechanic too much, but honestly, what can be said about stealth at this point that hasn't been said a million times before? I don't want these videos to go on for hours at a time explaining why I think it's a good idea to have common game mechanics in my own project. I want these little bookends to act as a way of breaking down a mechanic into simple terms so that it will be easier for us to recreate. The stealth genre doesn't need me to reinvent the wheel, but it's still a good idea to see if we can stick cards into the spokes. Next time, we'll make a start on our own stealth system and get some enemies moving around and behaving nicely. If you want to stay notified on future videos and updates about my crappy little game, why not subscribe to Project Masquerade? I've been maintaining a schedule of one video every two weeks, and I'm not slowing down anytime soon. I want to make a lot more content related to game development, so those videos will be making an appearance more often alongside my game design essays. So, until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.